Hey everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today we are going to be reviewing Nodecraft. Nodecraft has been featured in our top 5 Minecraft server hosting list in the past and today we're going to be diving in depth with them, going through all the quirks and features that they have, like Doug Demure might in a car video, but we're doing it with Minecraft server hosting companies. And like I said, we're going to go into everything from pricing to their back end to server management to what sets Nodecraft apart from everyone else. It's all going to be covered in this video. First and foremost though, we do have to tell you that the Nodecraft link in the description down below is an affiliate link. What that means is if you go and purchase through that link, we get a small cut at no additional cost to you. However, if you do decide to not use our link, we understand 110%, but that does help support us again at no additional cost to you. Also want to make sure I note here, it doesn't really have much effect on the rating or ranking that we give Nodecraft or this review because we have partnerships with every single Minecraft hosting company out there. And basically the deal is we're going to review you fairly. Sometimes that's bad. Sometimes that's good, but we're going to give you a fair review no matter what. And that's what we're doing here with Nodecraft as we've done in the past with other server hosting companies. We've also had partnerships with in some aspects. So nevertheless, let's go ahead and jump right on into it. The first thing that we always talk about with server hosting companies is ease of use. Why is this? Because if it's hard to use the server host in general, there's no reason to use it at all. And Nodecraft's ease of use is kind of interesting. It's unique. And what makes it unique is how servers are actually ran. On Nodecraft, you have multiple instances. And these instances can be switched between mod packs and vanilla and different different things like that. For example, you could have a mod pack for Sky Factory 2. You could have a vanilla Minecraft instance. You could have a paper server Minecraft instance with plugins. And you could have a, you know, Forge instance with your custom mods on it all running at the same time and only be paying for one server. Now, these instances are only going to be active when you have them active, right? Basically, you get a bot and then you can dedicate that bot to whatever instance you want, but you can move it around as far as I know as much as you want, right? So, for example, if you wanted to play Sky Factory 2, to one day, you would have your server on that bot or your bot on that Sky Factory 2 instance, and that would be your server. And then the next day, right, you say you don't want to play Sky Factory 2 anymore, you want to play vanilla Minecraft, you can move your bot from Sky Factory 2 over to vanilla Minecraft and your instance there and start playing on that. Now, sure, you can't play on Sky Factory until you move your bot again, but your data is still there, everything's still there, all you have to do is move your bot, and then it works. It's a really, really cool system, and it's what allows NoCraft to have a premium price in comparison to other hosts out there. You'll see here in a second, there are more premium hosts, but this bot system is so unique. It can also be great for like a network server doing testing. You can have multiple instances set up on NoCraft and move your bot between them to test all of your different network servers. You know, just have a simple test server set up that you can do there and move your bot around to all those test servers. It's the only server hosting company out there that allows you to do this and have multiple kind of instances without having to worry about data loss or anything when switching around. NodeCraft makes that easy. And it's truly unique and again, the only server hosting company that has that. So if that's something you think you would like, NodeCraft is your best option. Now, to do this, NodeCraft has a custom backend that is overall very cool. Now, some of the designs are a little like some may say outdated. They're not as modern as a lot of other companies out there, but that's okay because it's so cool and it's just a design feature. They decided to go with that route and that's perfectly fine. The fact that I, you know, think it's a little dated is okay, right? It's, some people will think it's more modern and they'll love it, but yeah. It can also be overwhelming because you do have all these different instances and you can manage all of them and change things and things like that. So that can be a bit overwhelming, but once you start to get the hang of it and see how easy it is to switch between different instances and manage those instances, it becomes second nature, right? Once you learn the panel, it becomes easy. Now, speaking of learning the panel, let's talk about their user guys. That moves us on to the next section. Ease of use. Pretty easy to use Nodecraft once you get the hang of it. And overall, it's the only one out there that allows easy switching between different game modes via the bot and instance setup that they have. Now, moving on from that though, what about user guides? Sadly, these are a bit hard to navigate. There's just one general section for Minecraft and it isn't categorized well, right? Now, Nodecraft does have other games that they host on there. And so they can't give all their attention to Minecraft. I get that, but to just have one general section for Minecraft is pretty hard. And some categorization for the general guides is there, but overall it's still not that great. And honestly, you need to know what you're looking for to be able to find it in their knowledge base. It's a little more complicated than what I'd like to see. And overall, their user guides are kind of subpar for the industry because of this, the categorization. In my opinion, if you're looking for a guide, you don't know the issue you're having. You're just kind of searching for something. You might be able to have a general rule, but sometimes even that, you might you might be calling it one thing and it's actually called another something else and you don't know what to search to find that. So you don't find the guide for it. As far as video guides, which is something we do look for, some guides have videos, but by no means all of them. And I would guess around 10% of guides overall on Nodecraft have videos. Might be a little higher, might be a little less but it's somewhere around there. I would say one in every 10, one in every eight articles we looked at, somewhere between that range 
pad and guide for it that is a video and I personally like to see video and text guides for everything but nevertheless no crafts overall user guides once you get in there and read the text and look at the images is pretty good but I would like to see more video guides and it's got to be easier to navigate it's kind of hard to navigate it with one general minecraft category and then having to search to find exactly what you're looking for overall though let's go ahead and move on to support now sadly nodecraft does not have 24 by 7 live chat support they do have live chat support for some of the day but not all of the day this video for the support testing that you're watching right now was planned and recorded on a weekend and their support team wasn't there it sucks but it is what it is they just were not there when we did this recording um you had to submit a ticket for a reply we did submit a ticket and we did get a reply but overall their live chat is pretty standard in the entry 24 7 and sadly they don't have it at nodecraft we would like to see that but again you have to submit a ticket in some cases if there is no live chat support and there wasn't when we recorded this about uh, 2 p.m something like that i think on a weekend Moving on from there, let's move on to quality of hardware. At Nodecraft, you have an Intel Xenon E2174G CPU. It's what they listed on their website, as well as 32 gigabytes of memory, SSDs, HD back backups, all that stuff is pretty standard. Um, as far as hardware goes, though, it is decent. These Intel CPUs are a few years older with a 2018 production, but that's not that bad. We've seen server hosts have CPUs from 2012 active live right now in 2021. So 2018 CPUs aren't that bad. We would like to see those updated and get some more desktop CPUs in there. But my guess is because they host so many different games, these server CPUs work better overall because, you know, what works great for Minecraft might not work great for Rust or another game they have. And in that case, you know, those server CPUs might work better. Server CPUs are going to be okay with Minecraft, but higher single core performance is going to be what's best for Minecraft. And a lot of times server CPUs lack in that. So that's kind of what you're looking at there. Overall, I would rank them middle to high middle of the road when it comes to server host go. They're not, you know, Ryzen CPUs or high end desktop CPUs that we like to see for specifically Minecraft, but they're not low end server CPUs that we see for some Minecraft server host as well. So they're kind of in the middle, maybe a little bit above the middle of the road when it comes to hardware on Nodecraft. As far as mod pack support goes, Nodecraft supports over 120 mod packs, which again puts them towards the middle of the road. They're currently set up for one click installation. It's a decent amount of mod packs. Like I said, it's competitive with other others in the industry, right in the middle of the road. But the thing that makes Nodecraft so unique is you can set up two, two instances with two separate mod packs and switch between those instances by just paying for one server bot. That's really, really cool. And the only people in the industry that offer that. So if you want to play multiple mod packs on your server, that is going to be the best way to do it. Nodecraft, it's super simple and super easy to play multiple mod packs and support multiple mod packs with one server bought on Nodecraft. Moving on from mod packs though, um, let's talk about price. Price is something that Nodecraft is a premium on. They're some of the, one of the highest in the industry I've seen, but you have to think you're not necessarily buying one server. If you're wanting to play multiple mod packs, run a vanilla server and a modded server, sure they won't be able to be live at the same time, but you'll be able to play both of them yourself or with your friends, as long as your friends tell you, you know, hey, can you activate or switch it to this server? We're done playing this one that could be you know a great way to do that but nevertheless for a two gigabyte server at no craft it is currently $19.98 per month however they are running a 50% discount for your first month for a four gigabyte server which is what you're going to be eyeing in on for mod packs and different things like that that's going to be $39.98 per month with a 50% off your first month for testing they also offer a seven day free trial at Nodecraft before getting charged for your server. However, you do need to purchase a server to set up FTP and things like that. However, seven day free trial is good because they are a premium price. You can try them, make sure you want that server switching, make sure they have the features you want before you do purchase. But when you do, it's gonna be $19.98 per month for two gigabytes and $39.98 per month for four gigabytes. This is a premium price in the Minecraft server hosting industry, but they do provide a premium product. Again, they're the only one in the industry that I've seen that allows you to switch between different mod packs and server versions and things like that very, very easily. By only paying for one server. So if that's something worth it to you, this price is also worth it to you. If it's not, there's probably other hosts out there. Moving on from that, let's go ahead and look at server locations. As far as locations go, they're pretty set well set up. They do have locations pretty much all around the world, which we like to see. They have 12 locations all around the world, with North America having three locations, Europe having four locations, Asia having one location, New Zealand slash Australia having three locations, and South America having one location in Brazil there. That's pretty much covering most of the world. The Middle East, Africa area is probably the least server Served as far as uh, no craft goes, but it is what it is. And while that area is underserved, some of the Asia locations and the European locations can kind of meet in the middle there and support some of that region. Overall, though, no craft is again pretty middle of the road when it comes to server locations 12 is a decent amount there's decent north america support with east middle and west coast support and you have european locations again with eastern europe middle of europe and then western europe support there as well asia locations in single singapore that's pretty common and a pretty common server location we see the two australia locations and one new zealand location is also really good supporting that you know south pacific great support there as far as um, that goes you don't see that a lot and then a south american location we'd love to see as well including south america is something more and more server 
Warehouse is trying to do, and NodeCraft is doing that as well. Now, as far as additional features go at NodeCraft, you do get an SQL server included with every single purchase, and all servers do have a free subdomain. Again, you also get, you know, good FCB support and all that, but you do need to purchase after the seven-day free trial. And that's actually another additional feature that's pretty cool at NodeCraft. There's a seven-day free trial, as we mentioned under pricing, but there's a seven-day free trial if you do want to try it out before you buy it, which we would recommend doing. But that's kind of the general overview of all the features and things like that that NodeCraft has. But what are the downsides of NodeCraft? Well, high priced, right? That, that's a big one. And no 24 hour support. That's something we both like to see. The knowledge base is also a little more harder to navigate and there is less locations out there. Again, Middle East and Africa not being supported is not something we like to see. And even North America, you maybe I could, could add a few locations there, depending if you look at other server hosts, there's definitely more locations in North America at most of those. So nevertheless, those are the downsides. Again, high price, slower support time, harder to navigate knowledge base and a few less locations than other server hosts. So What's our overall ranking here for NoCraft? Well, NoCraft is a premium server host, bar none. It is a higher price, but with that, you do get some higher end features. Specifically, the ability to switch between mod packs, server versions, and all that with just a few clicks while only paying for one server or bot, as NodeCraft calls it. Because of these unique features, price is kind of justified, and we're not going to consider it as much in our ranking as we might with a budget host, where price is going to be a big factor. Being a more premium host, price is something you're going to have to give on a little bit. It's just how it is. And with that, we're going to consider it a little less in our ranking here. Now, their support isn't 24 hours, and that is going to have a big effect. And the knowledge base being harder to navigate with a custom panel is also going to have a bigger effect on the ranking. So this was a hard one for us to kind of figure out. And uh, we went back and forth on where it should be on the list and like talked about it and everything. And long story short is it came in at about a four out of five, right? somewhere between 3.75 and 4.25 and we kind of went right in the middle at four out of five for nodecraft again that custom ability of being able to switch your server versions and mod packs and all that while only paying for one server sure only one mod pack or one server version is going to be live at a time but the ability to do that easy really bumps up nodecraft on this list quite a bit if that feature wasn't there they would be probably significant lower on the ranking but a four out of five is not bad because of those custom features, right? So that's great. There also is newer hardware there. While it is server hardware, it's newer hardware, which does bump them up a bit as well. So there you have it. That's our in-depth review of NodeCraft. They're a great premium server host if you want to play a bunch of different mod packs with your friends. Again, you will only be able to play one mod pack at a time. You'll have to be able to have multiple mod pack servers live at a time, but you can switch between them as you would like. And that's something we've only seen at NodeCraft. So there you go. There's our in-depth review of NodeCraft. What did you think? Let us know in the comment section down below. Give this video a thumbs up. We helped. And again, if you do decide to purchase through the NodeCraft link in the description down below, we do get a little percentage of that at no additional cost to you. So thanks very much for doing that in advance. Nevertheless, my name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. Thank you so, so much for watching. And I'm out. Peace.